Aloha class, I want to give you a brief chat about instrumentation. This stuff is really cool and we're going to use instrumentation to measure things such as blood pressure, heart rate, muscle contraction, and neurons firing. And how do we do that exactly? Have you ever thought about what happens? Why is it that we can measure the pulse just by pressing here on our wrist? Have you thought about what exactly is causing that? Well, it's because of several things. Our heart is connected to a closed circulatory system. So every time our really strong heart contracts and it squeezes that blood out, it courses through our arteries and veins and it causes a little pressure change that we can feel if we actually apply our sensors, which are our fingers, onto the right spot, right? And so what we're doing is we're measuring pressure changes. The force is causing our skin to bloop, 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 and that's what we're detecting. Okay, so these are sensors are just things that allow us to measure physical changes, whether they're pressure, force, um, stress, electrical signals, and so on. And those are all done via sensors. For example, this is our um, uh, pulse transducer, okay? And so just like our finger, it actually has sensors in here which are piezoelectric crystals, and they are very, very sensitive. They're also pretty robust. So um, if you attach the sensor to the fleshy part of the tip of your finger and put the Velcro strap on, uh, snug but not so tight that it cuts off your circulation. Well, when the pressure changes on your fingertip squeeze the piezoelectric crystals, what happens is there's actually a little voltage that is sent through the wire and the squeezing of the crystals causes a little voltage change and that's what's picked up by the instruments. Okay, so we're having some sort of mechanical signal that is picked up by a transducer or a sensor. That's connected to our PowerLab hardware, which then converts this analog electrical signal, which is a voltage, into a digital signal on our computer. The PowerLab does more than A to D conversion. It also does signal conditioning. But generally speaking, what we're trying to measure actually comes with quite a bit of noise, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. So two important things that this instrument does is it does um, signal conditioning, which includes amplification. So this has a built-in amplifier right here, which just basically increases the size of the signal. It increases the gain so that a lot of the times um, the signals are very small and it makes it bigger so that it's much easier to work with. It also has the ability to filter the data to remove the noise, to increase our ability to see the signal while minimizing the noise. And then finally, the analog to digital conversion happens, where basically you chop up this continuous voltage signal into a whole lot of discrete measurements that the computer can then handle. And so it's really important to think about the frequency at which you're measuring the data, um, both on the analog side and the, um, well, yeah, that's just kind of a general principle, uh, because your signal has a particular frequency, and you're, you're only going to take discrete measurements on it. And so, in general, a rule of thumb is that you want to use at least 10 times the sampling rate as the rate of your signal. So for example, if your blood pressure, uh, if your heart rate is about 60 beats per minute, you wanna take at least 600 measurements per minute in order to capture that peak. Um, and of course, if you want more details of the pulse, then you're gonna to wanna to take a higher sampling rate. But of course, the more samples you take, the much, much bigger your data files become. So it's really important that you have some idea of what your signal should look like. So number one, you can tell it apart from the noise. And number two, you have an appropriate sampling frequency so that you can capture the signal that you want. 
And then finally, it comes over to the computer. And so it's converted to digital. So you see this continuously valued um, voltage wave gets translated into a whole lot of zeros and ones. That's raw binary information. And then it gets tra uh, translated into some format that the software understands. And then you can analyze your data. And that's what we do as scientists. So we measure all of these things via various sensors, which we have a lot of. And they all pretty much convert into some sort of electronic analog signal, OK? So we have a bunch of connector types. And it's not that overwhelming. It's just this is a BNC connector. And it has this like metal collar on it. And it fits into these inputs right here, these BNC inputs. This is a pod connector. On our system, it's a nine pin connector. You can tell. And it fits into these pinholes here for this pod type. This is a bioamp cable for the amplifier and the, the things that you would attach to the amplifier. For example, for measuring ECG, uh, you ha we have these little uh, dish electrodes that we put on into these pins. And then it plugs into the bioamp cord right here. So let's take a look. So these are our, uh, we actually have three kinds of, um, <laughs> of uh, power lab uh, data acquisition systems. Uh, it's a little confusing, but don't worry, we'll help you sort it out. Uh, this is the newer model. Um, and these, we have two versions of an older model. They all work. And in some ways, some are better than others, but they basically all do the same thing. The newer one comes with this suitcase that has all the attachments already packed in here. Really important that you keep this together and not mix with any of the others because they're not cross compatible. The newer one, the older ones have just a tub, but it's the same thing. It just doesn't look as fancy. And it has all of the parts that work with it nicely stowed away and organized. So here's the BNC connector on this set of alligator clips. And you can see it looks like this, and it would go into these inputs here. So you just put it in and slide until it clicks. And that's your basic BNC connector. You might have seen them on your TVs in the old days especially. This is an example of the pod connector. Uh, it has a direction to it. And you just, so just pay attention to where this uh, little indent is and where it is lines up on the pod connector. All of them have two very important uh, cords, <laughs> which are the power cord. And you would be amazed at how many people say, my instrument doesn't work. Well, did you plug it in? <laughs> OK, so it obviously requires a lot of power. It's just a standard power cable. So it just goes in right here. OK, and then um, they, they all require a USB cable. And this is a standard, like you might have seen on your printer cable, that goes here and the other end goes into your computer. And this is a very important cable because it's what is sending the data from your data acquisition system to the computer. Without it, they can't talk. Um, and then for the older models, now I told you that this one has the amplifier built in. Okay, so there's no extra amplifier here. It's already integrated. But for the older models, you have to grab the amplifier, the bioamp that goes with your machine. And this is number three. And this is uh, our number three it's right here. It looks like this. This is the bioamp. So there's where the pod connector goes for the bioamp cable, which is together with the bioamp. So this would go in here 
and this is where your electrodes would attach to. Okay, and then, then there's and then there's two more important cables, okay, that are for connecting the data acquisition system to the amplifier. And this one is a standard serial cable that supplies power to the amplifier. So you just go from the back of the data acquisition system here. There's one serial cable port. So you would use the female end on the male end here. And then the other end will go into the amplifier. And they, they basically, it's just a daisy chain of, of instruments that are power, being powered through the data acquisition system. Make sure you attach it and then screw the pins in. And then the final piece is this one. And this provides the information transfer between the amplifier and the DAC. So this would go in here, and then this is gonna go in the front. And your lab manual will tell you which port to put it into. Okay, um, okay. so these things do both pro create little electrical fields around them. So you don't want to stack up a whole bunch of electronics. You want to like keep them separated so that they don't cause electrical noise. So really important, how do we get clean signals, right? Because we don't want to be spending all our time measuring noise, <laughs> okay? So how do we minimize the noise? Maximize the signal and minimize the noise. Good signal to noise ratio. Well, noise is everywhere. And anytime you're using electricity, you're gonna have to deal with electrical noise. Even our lights overhead, all of our electricity runs at 60 hertz frequency. Okay, so that's a typical source of noise that we can't always filter out. But you can increase that noise. Like for example, if you try to take recordings with your cables like this, all tangled up. So remember, um, current, will generate magnetic fields. And so with all this going on, you're gonna create a noisy signal. So first of all, take care of your cables. So uh, sensors aren't too, too bad, but it just depends on what you're measuring and how sensitive it is. You can tell though that um, things that are shielded generate a lot of, so power cables, create a lot of noise. They carry a lot of electricity. <laughs> so you can sort of go by how much it's cabled, uh, how much it's shielded. But even with our information cables, so information versus power, right? You can see the difference here. This is, so if you have this, like tangled up with this, this is gonna cause a lot of problem in terms of noisy signal. So make sure everything is clean and organized, like straighten it out, put the power cables as far away from the information carrying cables as you can. Um, it's not that hard, <laughs> just be neat. Um, any kind of irrelevant movement, so vibrations are everywhere, they're in the building, we have um, machinery that runs the building, the AC and all that, and so if the measurements are super sensitive, that causes noise the animal might move, okay? So if your animal moves while you're trying to measure its heart, for example, that's gonna cause noise. So you have to be aware and take notes and make sure that you avoid the noisy parts of your data and just measure the good stuff. And then the last thing is not really noise, but it's a common thing that uh, you sort of have to learn as you go. And that is that when you open up your software, it's gonna like create a graph for you, but um, your y-axis might not be scaled appropriately to measure your signal. So you have to know how big your signal is expected to be. So for example, if your signal is on the order of one unit, but then your y-axis is on the order of a million, then you're not going to be able to see anything. It'll just be this flat line that's at zero. So there's this feature on the software called auto scale. Auto scale is going to be your best friend. So if you push that button, it will try to find the scaling that best shows the variation in your signal. 
hey, but you're, you'll have to tweak it from time to time. Because if you auto scale right after some guy with huge feet walks by stomping around, then there's going to be this huge spike and the auto scale will catch that spike. <laughs> so in that case, you just got to wait until that clears out of the buffer and auto scale again, or you can just manually scale it. So it's not that hard and it's really a lot of common sense, but it just helps if you actually understand what's going on. So not that we expect you to be engineers or anything like that, but just be aware of what produces good signal. Um, what it is you're measuring. What is it that the sensors are picking up? How does that measurement connect to the biological process that you're trying to measure? Okay, and then just have fun because it's super cool. Okay, thanks for listening. See you in class.